चाहती हूँ इस प्रस्ताव को क्योंकि हमारे बीच में अन्य राज्यों से भी लोग हैं जो हिंदी या बांग्ला नहीं समझते उसको मैं इंग्लिश में पढ़ते रही हूँ और संक्षिप्त में हिंदी में रखती हूँ सी सी रेजोल्यूशन रेजोल्यूशन कमेमोरेटिंग फिफ्टी एथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ नक्सलबाड़ी अपराइजिंग ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द फिफ्टी एथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द हिस्टोरिक नक्सलबाड़ी अपराइजिंग द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया मार्क्सिस्ट लैंग्वेज लिबरेशन सल्यूट्स दी इन्यूमरेबल मार्टर्स ऑफ द कम्युनिस्ट मूवमेंट इन आर कंट्री रीडेडिकेट्स इट सेल्फ टू द कॉज ऑफ इंडियन रेवल्यूशन एंड कॉल्स अपॉन द हिरोइक पीपल ऑफ इंडिया टू फर्दर इंटेंसिफाई दी ऑन गोइंग स्ट्रगल अगेंस्ट ऑल काइंड ऑफ ऑपरेशन एक्सप्लाइटेशन डेप्रिवेशन ह्यूमिलिएशन एंड अनफ्रीडम नक्सलबाड़ी इज हिस्टोरिकल सब्सटेंस एंड कंटेम्प्रेरी रेजिलेंस वन नक्सलबाड़ी एपिटमाइज अ प्रेजेंट अपराइजिंग विद डिफरेंस व्हिच रेज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ चेंजिंग लैंड रिलेशंस टू द लेवल ऑफ सीजर ऑफ स्टेट पावर द स्टेट डिड ऑल इट कुड to try and crush the communist led upsurge right at its inception the social killings take and counters mass extermin extermination of young activists and their family members third degree torture uh, indiscriminate indefinite detention without trial much that has now become routine in terms of state repression actually originated as the state response to naxalbari alongside brutal repression the state also resorted to systematic demonization of the naxalbari movement equating nationalism with terrorism and dubbing it the biggest internal threat to national security yet ahead of the 50th anniversary of the naxalbari uprising we saw bharatiya janata party president uh amit shah visit naxalbari with great fanfare making it the starting point of his mission bengal intriguingly enough soon after the first leg of his bengal visit was over the couple who hosted him in naxalbari left uh, the bjp to migrate to the trinamool congress the talk of war over naxalbari between the parties ruling at the center and in the state make one thing crystal clear that despite so much repression and demonization naxalbari still remains a potent symbol even in the calculations of the powers that be who have declared naxalbari dead many times over the historical significance and contemporary relevance Naxalbari derived from the fact that it was rooted in a conscious, organized, and sustained communist attempt to resurrect the spirit of Tehada and Telangana. Tehada was a revolutionary struggle of the peasantry in undivided Bengal of the 1940s. Charamajunga and many of his fellow architects and organizers of Naxalbari were actually activists of the Tehada agitation. And Naxalbari and the adjoining areas of North Bengal were major centers of that historic peasant upheaval. Accompanying this conscious endeavor was a sharp ideological struggle within the communist movement. Ever since the Tehara Telangana days, there was a serious view within the communist movement that felt that the present question and the po potential of an agrarian revolution had been grossly neglected in India. The debate got sharpened after the communist leadership officially withdrew from the Telangana struggle and effectively subordinated the extra parliamentary dimension of the movement to a predominantly parliamentary perspective. The famous documents of Charmagunda give an authentic and insightful account of this ideological political debate roots of naxalbari it is important to emphasize the background and roots of naxalbari within the indian communist movement for far too often we find for accounts of naxalbari that treat it as an imitation of the chinese experience of the cultural revolution naxalbari of course drew a lot of inspiration from china and the uh, communist party of china turned it as spring thunder in india But we have to appreciate the essence of Naxalbari. We will have to locate it firmly within the Indian context of the turbulent 1960s, the deepening crisis of the ruling classes and the Indian state, and the deeply felt urge within the communist movement to treat the juncture as a revolutionary opportunity for the Indian people. Two successive wars that helped place a heavy burden on the Indian people have placed a heavy burden of economic burden on the Indian people. The dreams ignited during the freedom movement. Amid massive food shortage, soaring prices, stagnant agriculture, and growing unemployment, following the demands of Nehru and his successor Lal Bahadur Shastri, the Congress was caught in a clumsy process of leadership transition. The first signs of its electoral decline could be seen with the party losing power in as many as nine states in 1967. In West Bengal, too, the Congress got voted out by a coalition government in which the communists were the biggest component. 
it was against this backdrop that Naxal Bari happened and when the state chose to crush, crush the present rebellion, communist revolutionaries responded with a call to spread the fairy fire of Naxal Bari across the country and turn the 1970s into a decade of liberation for the Indian people. Within two years of the Naxal Bari uprising, the architects of Naxal Bari have taken the next step of forming the Communist Party, the, a new Communist Party, the Communist Party of India, Marxist Leninist. The new party which evoked tremendous response among revolutionary communist ranks and spread fast across length and breadth of India stood in sharp contrast to its two predecessors, the CPI and CPM. The CPI had effectively abandoned the great Telangana uprising, but the CPI was formed with the declared goal of fostering and spreading the fire of Naxal Bari. The CPM was formed through a virtual split within the CPI and the founding members of the CPIM were all senior leaders of the undivided CPI. The founding leaders of CPIML were mostly district level leaders of the CPIM. Most significantly, given the CPIML understanding of the Agrarian Revolution as a key of the democratization of society and the landless poor as a leading force of agrarian change, the new party found a more receptive audience among the oppressed rural poor, mostly Dalits, extreme backward class and Adivasis in social terms. The deep roots among the oppressed poor has been a great source of fighting strength and resilience of the CPIML in the face of acute state repression and feudal violence perpetrated often by state patronized private armies of landlords. The vision of Charumadunda. Media analysts often tend to identify the CPIML or what is popularly described as Naxalism with the specific forms of struggle adopted by the CPIML in its initial phase. The CPIML had characterized the situation in the late 1960s as a favorable revolutionary situation and accordingly the revolution itself became the direct and immediate agenda. Partial demands everyday work of mass organizations and electoral intervention all took a back seat in that schema of things and armed struggle became the central focus. But if one takes a slightly longer term view of the emergence and evolution of the CPIML, it becomes clear that the CPIML never made a fetish of any particular form of struggle. The efficacy and suitability of specific forms depending on the given situation were de decided depending on the given situation and objective conditions. The eight documents had laid down the ideological po political foundation of Naxal Bari and they did not rule out any form of struggle. Even while treating armed struggle as a central form of mobilization and action, Chara Majumda always warned against the danger of militarism and insisted on keeping politics and command and unleashing the initiative of the masses. And in the wake of severe military crackdown and adverse changes in the situation following the consolidation of the Indira Gandhi regime after the 1971 electoral victory and the Bangladesh war, in his last writing, Chara stressed the need for a broad anti-autocratic coalition of left and democratic forces. The interests of the people are the interests of the party, he reminded his comrades. The revival of the CPIML following the massive setback of the 1970s posed a great challenge to the communist revolutionary camp. As it often happens after every setback, some sections virtually began to disown the entire movement calling the whole thing a big blunder. At the other end of the spectrum were those who continued to hold armed struggle as the exclusive form and arena of struggle, eventually cutting themselves off from the CPIM stream and rechristening their organization, the CPI Maoists. While the Maoists have found some favorable terrain in the forests of India, the rejuvenated CPIM struck deep roots among the oppressed rural poor in Bihar and Jharkhand, making its presence felt through powerful struggles of the rural poor and assertion of radical students and women. The mass support was also led to a string of electoral victories and sustained political intervention in states like Bihar and Jharkhand. During the first phase of, first phase of showdown with the state, there had been little opportunity for the fledgling party to review its experience and draw appropriate lessons. Rectification of old mistakes has opened up new vistas of struggle and assertion of the oppressed and exploited people for the whole gamut of their rights. The present situation and the spirit of Naxal Bari. As we observe the 50th anniversary of the historic uprising, let us look at the major takeaways from the movement and their contemporary relevance. A few points readily demand our attention. Naxal Bari was a present revolt that had turned the pain and anger of the oppressed landless poor into a powerful resistance. This message of Naxal Bari cannot but resonate loud and clear in the face of today's acute agrarian crisis. The pain has taken a heavy toll. Hundreds of thousands of death-stricken, crisis-ridden peasants have taken their own lives, but the flame of resistance burns bright.
strike against every instance of forcible land acquisition and agrarian injustice. Naxal Party was an absurd and radical youth comparable in its intensity, scale and sacrifice to the role of the students in the freedom movement. Urban students in their thousands plunging headlong into revolutionary politics, fanning into the countryside to get integrated with the oppressed rural poor and articulating a new diction of people first patriotism. The spirit of Naxal Party today resonates across university campuses as the twin processes of WTA dictated commercialization and Sanghi subversion unleash a veritable war on the student community and turn every university into a battlefield. At the time when nationalism is sought to be redefined as people first patriotism popularized by Naxal Party, uh, the people first patriotism popularized by Naxal Party provides the most effective bulwark to defend the democratic diversity of multicultural India against the fascist project of homogenization and regimentation. With Naxal Bari began a new approach to Indian history, defying the dominant framework of viewing history through the eyes of rulers, the day shifted to the history of the oppressed. <laughs> From Gandhi and Subhash Bose to Bhagat Singh and Ambedkar, every popular icon of modern history is up for grabs today. The Saffron rulers are desperate today to bridge their history deficit. Today we see a war on history in India from this end. And Naxal Bari inspires us to resist this war. Most crucially, Naxal Bari was a great moment of radicalization of the Indian Communist movement. It gave rise to a new paradigm of class struggle that is not confined to the economic realm or the parameters of parliamentary politics, but committed to fight out oppression and injustice in every sphere of social existence. Issues of caste and gender, race and nationality, language and culture found their rightful place in this new praxis of class struggle. Today the Sun Brigade is in power with its Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan agenda. It is desperate to bulldoze India under the twin wheels of corporate power and communal polarization. In this scenario, the radical energy and resilience of Naxal Bari could perhaps never be more needed. We also pay Homage to the role of honor to the comrades who fell to firing by the paramilitary forces on 25th May 1967 as Bengai joke, and to all the other comrades who led the historic Naxal Bari uprising and who laid down their lives in the process of building the Naxal Bari uprising and the fledgling CPI.